I have here a sample, which I'm going to show you how to place on the microscope and then find it in the software. So you can see that this sample holder, these are on rails. And so you have to adjust the size of these to be compatible with the size of your sample. This happens to be a slide and you can place it in position there. Um, if it were a 35 millimeter dish with a covered glass bottom, you can adjust this. You see it has a sort of circle outline. You can adjust them to the size necessary to place that in. And remember, whatever you have, you're going to place it on this bottom rim. So with that, the sample is in position. I'm just going to center, which is uh, usually a good idea. And I'll show you how to illuminate the sample so that we can see it by eye, find the focal position and something of interest to image. To image the sample, we're going to lower this microscope arm by grabbing it from there, pulling it down gently. It's quite heavy. Um, there we go. And we're going to go to the software and in the locate tab, which is where we are right now, we're going to make sure the system mode is eyepiece. And then we'll have these quick access buttons that allow us to set things up for common floor floors, for bright field, for DIC for objectives lesser than or equal to 25x magnification or greater than or equal to 40x magnification. So for example, uh, this sample has uh, actually floor fours that are, you know, it has literally it has DAPI and then it has a green floor four and a red floor four. And so by pressing these buttons, we can find, um, uh, we, we can activate everything necessary to look at that particular fluorescence in the sample. So for example, if I press green, you will see blue light hitting the sample. Uh, and then uh, when we look through the eyepiece, we will see the resulting green fluorescence. If instead I press red, we will see green light hitting the sample and the resulting red fluorescence will be visible in the eyepieces. Once uh, we have set things up and have something in focus, we can press the off button and that will turn off um, the light illuminating the sample. Now there are other ways of doing the things that we did here, um, either on the microscope or through the touch screen. So let me show you how we do those things. So let's say that uh, we start by looking at the green fluorescence. Again, blue light hits the sample. There will be green fluorescence through the eyepiece. And we want to switch to uh, a different floor floor. Uh, it can be a little bit annoying to try and find the mouse in the dark. So I'm recording this with light, but usually when you do this, uh, the lights of the room are out to help you find things. So it can be a little bit annoying to try and find the mouse, then try and find the cursor on the screen, then try and press a little button to change, for example, to red. Uh, that takes a bit of time. Um, so uh, a faster option, if you want to change, is you can go to the touch screen, press the reflector button, and then here, what, what these, um, what these buttons do is they allow you to change the filter and dichroic combination. So underneath um, the objective in here, there's a turret that has different filters in it that you can move around using this and that the software moves around when you press the buttons that I showed you before. Um, so for example, if we press this AF546, it switches to the red filter. Now, the reason you might want to do that here instead of here is that this is closer to you, it has bigger buttons and it's easier to see in the dark. So a lot of people prefer that, including myself. Um, so you might want to change filters by pressing these buttons. Um, another thing that you can do is if you don't want, when you're done, to have to, again, find the mouse and click on the off button to turn things off, you can do that in two other ways. The first of which is here where it says RL illumination. You can press that button to turn off the illumination, you'll see it's off. If I go back here and turn it on, it turns on. And so this is a good habit to get into to turn it off as soon as you stop looking at it to avoid bleaching. Now, obviously I'm bleaching it a lot right now, but this is a training video and this is a very stable sample. For your things, you want to be more cautious than what I'm doing right now for educational purposes. Um, there is another way of turning off that lamp uh, actually of, of put, placing a shutter in the, in, the, in the path of the light towards the sample, which is, again, so first one we discussed with pressing off here. Second one was pressing RL illumination off here. The third one is the button is on the microscope itself. This button labeled RL will turn the light off. So if I press that, you can see the light is off and it's a toggle. So if I press it again, the light will turn on. 
So this is even faster because when you're um, when you're looking down the eyepieces and you have maybe your hand here on the joystick or nearby, it's very easy to just turn this on and off here. There is also an alternative to uh, using this to change which floor for you're looking at by eye, and that is on the left side of the microscope. Uh, on this knob, there are five buttons, one, two, three, which you can barely see. And then just trust me, there's two buttons down here at the back, which look a lot like this. These two buttons rotate the thing underneath the objective that changes filters. So if I press one of those buttons, you'll see that I'll, I'll go from the AF546 to the DAPI. If I press the other of the buttons, I go back. So it just rotates it in different directions. And if I get lost, I can just keep going. They're on a circular turret. So eventually you will get back to um, whichever uh, floor four you're at. So this means that you can change floor fours very quickly without looking away from the microscope. You can have your eyes here, one hand here, the other hand on the focus and switch quickly between floor fours to check, you know, if at a, uh, at a, you know, at a, at a very basic level, things are close to each other or not. Um, it can be very useful to do that. So those are um, several ways that you can look at uh, fluorescence by using controls either on the microscope, on the touch screen, or in the locate tab in the software. If you need to use bright field uh, or a form of DIC, what you will do is press one of these buttons. And when you do, the light from here will turn on, will go down into the sample. Um, and you'll be able to see a white image through the eyepiece. If the image is too, um, too bright or too dim, you can adjust the brightness of the lamp here. Obviously turning uh, that way uh, makes it brighter, turning that way makes it dimmer. And uh, once, you've, uh, once you're done uh, looking at it, you can turn that uh, light off by pressing TL, which is a toggle just like RL, but for the transmitted light, you can turn off TL here or you can turn off TL here. Uh, I'm gonna do it here since that's where I am. And you can see the transmitted light will turn off. Um, if you are using transmitted light, um, I will uh, in person cover how to uh, do something called color alignment of the system to make sure your bright field is uh, as optimal as we can get it. Um, if you are using uh, in particular uh, DIC, so Differential Interference Contrast Illumination, which is very good uh, for looking at um, cells. Um, if you actually want to do that, you will need to place an optical element underneath uh, the objective. And those are in a little box in the room. And that's those two things, uh, doing color alignment and putting that DIC slider in are things that um, I will uh, not cover in this video and we'll show you how to do in an in-person training.